For this lesson, we're going to start getting into a little bit of the flame characteristics. What to look for if there are issues with the, the burner or the ignition itself. So, when you look at a piece of equipment, and obviously through experience and, and time, you begin to learn the sounds, sequence of operation of a particular appliance that you're working on. The same goes for, you know, flame patterns and the flame characteristics of a lot of different units that are out there. Sometimes just by simply turning on a piece of equipment, watching and listening to the operation of that unit can really give you some idea of what's actually going on without even having to put a meter on there, gas pressure manometer, anything like that onto a unit. Uh, experience really does play a big role in learning uh, the operation of a lot of different things. Now, when it comes to the flame on a natural gas furnace, we want to look at the shape, we want to look at the color and the pattern of that flame. All of those things we want to keep in mind. Okay, by observing how a furnace actually does work, it can tell us whether or not there is something actually wrong with it. Which is why a lot of new technicians spend time doing a lot of preventative maintenances uh, before doing service calls. When you are doing a maintenance, changing a filter, cleaning the burner, checking gas pressures, and all that lovely stuff, you should be taking some time and learning the operation of that equipment and not just doing the filter and, and, and walking away. You should have to uh, you should have to learn the the operation of what things are are doing. So in regards to a flame it may sound ridiculous, like, oh my god, i got to really learn how, what, the, the pattern of a flame. Well, yeah, because those flame patterns can produce a lot of these different types of problems. Okay? We can have what we call a flame lifting. We can have what's called flame flashback, a yellow flame, a flame that's floating, flame rollout, flame that's too small for some reason. Sometimes by simply looking at the flame and what it's actually doing can give you an idea of what's wrong. Now, a good flame is going to have a soft bluish color to it with, you know, maybe a little orange tips flickering on and off a little bit on there. Okay, the flame is not going to be lifting away from the burner, but the flame should literally be sitting on the burner itself, okay, inside the heat exchanger. That's a good flame. Anything other than that, we got a problem. Now, let's look at a flame lifting. Look at that picture there on the left. When that furnace lights off, we want that flame to sit right on the burner and then shoot out. Okay, nice blue flame with a little bit of orange flicker going on. If we look at this, that flame is far away from my burner. Okay, it's lifting off. Okay, these types of flames are going to be very loud. They're going to be noisy. It's going to be turbulent and is a very good cause for carbon monoxide. Now, what can cause those issues? Well, big thing is probably going to be air. We're going to have way too much primary air going into there. 
the burner orifice is probably too large, okay, because somebody went in there and decided to change the orifice. Uh, what could have happened, uh, and I know I've seen this in my experience, was a furnace conversion from uh, propane to natural gas where the technician just forgot to change the orifice size and change the gas pressures. Um, so you got to look at stuff like that if you happen to see a furnace do something like this. Now flame flashback is going to, it causes combustion to occur inside the actual burner itself, okay, or inside the heat exchanger. And when this happens, the flame is going to come out at you <laughs> in the wrong way. Okay, it's going to literally flash at you. It's almost like a spontaneous combustion. Uh, this is going to be caused by low manifold pressure. Okay, so if it's natural gas and you're not running at three and a half inches of water column, or if it's propane, you're not at 11 inches of water column. You could have too much primary air. Uh, you can have a dirty burner orifice, okay, uh, you can have dust in there, you can have a spider, something clogging, um, a partial of the orifice itself. Uh, the burner itself can be just simply dirty, or you can have low gas pressure to even begin with. You just don't even have enough gas pressure to supply the furnace at all. At, at all. So you're going to want to clock the gas meter to see whether or not you're getting the correct amount of gas flow to that appliance if you have some sort of flame flashback. Uh, a yellow flame, it's just like it says, it's, it's yellow. Okay, These are a cause of carbon monoxide. It's going to cause soot buildup. Uh, this is definitely going to be caused by airflow issues. Primary air is not enough. You're going to have dirty burner orifices. Uh, a restricted heat exchanger. Uh, it could be caused by a restricted vent system. Uh, you could have like a, maybe a dead raccoon in the flue pipe, uh, a bee's nest, some, something in there that's going to restrict the airflow. So you're going to want to look at stuff like that. Uh, the flame is floating. Uh, it's going to literally look like a, a flag like waving in the air, like waving in the breeze. It's very unsteady. It's going to appear lazy, like kind of like lying down. Um, this is going to be caused by insufficient secondary air, uh, a restricted heat exchanger, or air blowing the flame through the heat exchanger, which is a big sign of a cracked heat exchanger. Okay, so you want to look at stuff to see what these flames are actually doing. A flame rollout, it's going to roll out in the wrong direction towards towards you and away from the heat exchanger. Uh, these are going to be caused again by a restricted heat exchanger, blocked vent system, inadequate primary air, high gas manifold pressure. Uh, a flame rollout can also be caused by a cracked heat exchanger. Uh, you may not necessarily see it happen when the furnace initially lights off, but once the indoor blower turns on, once the furnace reaches temperature, you may see the flame actually roll out at you. Um, or a flame is too small. Uh, this is obviously going to have a problem with someone complaining that the building or home is not heating properly or it's taking an extremely long time for the furnace to, to heat up a room or space. Uh, this is going to be caused by low gas manifold pressure, dirty or blocked burner orifices, or your burner orifice to begin with is just simply too small. Now when it comes to gas orifices, you do not want to just go in there and adjust gas orifice sizes without checking with manufacturer's technical support, manufacturer's literature to see what you have in there or what you're supposed to have in there. Uh, always. Always, when in doubt, uh, refer to a gas orifice sizing chart to compare apples to oranges to see what you actually have and what you're supposed to do and, and so on and so forth. Because once you start messing around with orifices and stuff like that, you can create actually more harm than good. <laughs>